Well, here's a big hint. If your own phone number calls you, don't pick up. You know, scammers keep coming up with new and more creative schemes to steal your money or valuable data. However, this new scam has the potential to outsmart all other types of fraud. The Better Business Bureau has already called it the most dangerous phone scam out there. So if your own phone number calls you, never take the call. With all the super-advanced technologies we have nowadays, it's not a problem for scammers to create a fraudulent number that looks like your own. They just need to copy your digits with the help of a special computer program and voila! What's really alarming is that even if you have call blocking set up on your cell phone, scammers are still able to get around it. But more often than not, they don't even have to do that. Curiosity is human nature, and lots of people who've suffered at the hands of these criminals admit that they wanted to find out how it was even possible that their own phone number was calling them. So, regrettably, they answered the call. So, what's in it for these criminals? Scammers are skilled psychologists and master orators, it's true. They can read you like a book and use their silver tongue to talk you into giving them information about your phone account and even your social security and credit card numbers. And if that's not what they want, then they're in it to insert fraudulent charges on your phone bill. What cover story do scammers use? Typically, the bad guys calling you from your own number introduce themselves as representatives from your mobile provider. They start by informing you that somebody has hacked your account. Then, they ask you to verify a few things. This sounds so trustworthy and people are already freaked out at the thought of their account being hacked that they willingly give up their personal data. And this is all based on what victims of this crime have said. Donnie Claxton got a dangerous call on a weeknight. He checked his cell phone and was amazed to see that it was him calling himself. Puzzled and probably intrigued, he picked up. With Mr. Claxton's case, the caller was silent for 9 seconds and then hung up. But a woman from South Carolina that was curious enough to take the call as well actually had a conversation with the scammers. They introduced themselves, saying that they were calling from the phone company, and the reason for their call was that her account had been compromised. They wanted to warn her about this and get her personal data in order to verify and stop the hack. A man from Texas was told by a recorded voice that his account had been hacked through AT&T. To recover it, the man had to provide the last four digits of his social security number. And if you keep digging, you'll find tons of more people who have been cheated in the same way. So how can you avoid becoming a victim of this fraud? First and foremost, don't answer the phone. There's no way that you are calling yourself. Authorities also recommend signing up for the National Do Not Call Registry. And if you get unwanted calls, you can report them to the Federal Trade Commission. The Federal Communications Commission advises people to always verify callers claiming to be representatives of government agencies and other organizations. To do that, you can simply hang up and call the number given on the company's official website. Also, be extremely cautious about the information you're about to give anyone calling you. In some scams that were more popular in the past, it was enough for you to say the word yes to give criminals an opportunity to use your recorded voice in their frauds. That's why it's absolutely vital to take all the necessary steps to protect your personal information and your money from falling into the wrong hands. This ploy is just one of many phone scams that criminals keep coming up with. Here are several others that are still pretty popular. Scam involving your local area code. People tend to automatically trust calls from their local area code more because it seems like the caller is from nearby businesses or neighbors. Research shows that not many people feel comfortable blocking local phone numbers. They actually prefer to avoid this by all means. Repeated call scams Scammers are able to program special auto-dialers so that they'll make repeated calls to your phone but disconnect after just one ring. Of course, after some time, you'll get so irritated that you'll want to call them back and give them a piece of your mind. 
But before you dial that number in a fit of rage, think twice. If the area code is 664, 876, or 268, it's coming from the Caribbean, and you'll be charged for every minute of the call. Another possible outcome is that you'll be transferred a bunch of times, racking up your bill sky high. The can you hear me scam. Well, this scheme isn't new, but people keep falling for it. A sweet sounding lady calls you up and starts fussing with her headset. You're breaking up, I can't hear you. Hello, can you hear me? For goodness sakes, do not say yes. Your voice will be used for fraudulent purposes that are likely to leave you without a substantial chunk of your savings. If you realize that you're about to become a victim of a phone scam, first of all, stay calm. If you're panicked, you forget about caution. By the way, that's why criminals typically insist that their call is urgent. Immediately get suspicious if the caller tries to get hold of your personal data. And by all means, avoid talking to strangers on the phone if possible. At least check the caller ID every time you get a call. And if you don't recognize it, let it go to voicemail. Be attentive if you have picked up. Listen for pauses after each time you say something. It's most likely a robocall, so hang up. If you hear an automated message, do not follow its instructions or press one or any other button. This will lead to even more robocalls. Between you and me, I'm just waiting for the day when, during such a scam call, you can press a special button which sends an electrical charge over the line, zaps the scammer just enough to hurt a little, well, maybe more than a little, fries his phone, and sends the local police to his address with a warrant for his or her arrest. Well, I can dream, can't I? Hey, have you ever gotten any suspicious calls? How did you handle it? Tell us in the comments below. And don't forget to click subscribe to stay on the bright side of life. Side of